Hey guys, it's Ravenhawk6910 reporting once again. And I know it's been a little bit since my last update, but here we are, middle of August 2020. So, a lot of stuff's been done on the layout in the last month or so, so let's go ahead and get into it. So since the last layout video I did, there's been quite a lot of work done in here. So I'm going to start with the most obvious one here on the main section of the table here. And that is the ground cover that I laid down. Now, this is just really simple, basic ground covering from Woodland Scenics. It's just the blended turf that they use. In fact, uh, I've got it right up here, actually. That's the blended turf that they use, that they put out. And uh, I also mixed in a little bit of this coarse turf as well, just to have some variety in there. And uh, it's worked out really well. It's a nice combination, and I just uh, secured it to the table, first of all, with a layer of brown latex paint, just to give it a little bit of a dirt <clears throat> look to it. And then I just sprinkled that on and then sprayed Scenic Cement on top of that, just this stuff right here, to secure it in place. Stupid simple. And uh, it looks a heck of a lot better than just the raw wood. Now, before I laid that down, I also installed two layers of this cork right here. This was needed to raise the height of the table to match the height on the shelf over here because as you can see I did have to install another layer up here to try to bring up the height on the bridge and I'm still gonna have to do some more adjustments over here because of the track and that darn bridge also you know the bridge is a necessary evil but it's also proven to be a big pain in the butt as well and I'll show you exactly what I mean right over here because when I got the bridge the issue was raising up the, the uh, height of the track to the height of the bridge deck. Now I finally have solved that problem by installing this roadbed material from Woodland Scenics. So that finally got the track level to the point that my mainly articulated steam locomotives, those were the ones that I was having the primary issue with, what was happening was when the engine would come down they would have to go up a bit of an incline to get up to the height of the bridge. And then when they would come down, the pilots would smack the center rail, which would cause a massive spark, and that's not good at all for your trains. Or, in the case of the Challengers, the centipede tender would derail going up that thing. Because on the Challengers, let me grab the tender from the 3949 here, the wheels are just one solid piece. So this would raise up, and then when it would come back down, those center sections of wheels would derail. And that, of course, would cause even more problems. So, I got this Woodland Scenics material here, and uh, they come 12 pieces per pack. However, because my track already has the pre-attached roadbed, because I'm using Lionel Fast Track, that basically meant that I had to use more material to cover more area. So I basically ended up laying the pieces down two by two and then stacking one additional layer on top of that to make the correct height. So basically there are two, it's a section two strips wide going down to here where I ran out. They only come 12 pieces per pack, so I uh, have placed an order for some more, so that should be here soon, but here on the other side as well, you can see where I had to do that work over here as well. And once I install the switch down here, I'm going to have an 072 switch, that'll come off, run down through here, and basically allow me to get to the end of this siding over here, right about where, oh, I'd say a little bit past the Challenger tenders where that siding will end. And uh, for that, 
I'm going to use that 072 switch. And I'm going to be wiring up these K&R model design signals that they sent me. These are actually specifically designed for use with Fast Track, but I've been meaning to get a video done on that for a little bit. So, uh, Ken and Richard, if you're watching, sorry I haven't gotten to that yet, but things have been hectic over here. So, I've barely had time to even consider working on videos at the moment. So, but I will get to that as quickly as possible. Now, another thing, you might notice there is another larger bridge on top of the original one here. This came from the same person that made this first bridge. However, this is a double track bridge. This is for the upper level. Now, the upper level, I still need to replace this board here and its cousin on the other side. Now, I'll obviously have to extend the length of it out a little bit. However, this one I am not going to do what I did down here and just set the bridge on the table and then build cork up because quite frankly this has been a royal pain in the butt to do. So instead I'm going to have another section that's mounted below the shelf that comes out slightly that will support the bridge on that. So that's the plan tentatively for right now to do that. And the bridge obviously will be repainted to a, well I said repainted, painted in general. Probably to a <clears throat> similar gray like this. However, since this is going to be for the industry area, I'm probably just going to rust this one up and weather it. You know, make it look like a bridge that's not used as heavily as, say, the one down here on the main line. But we'll see. We will see how that goes. Now, as for the upper level itself, one of the changes I've done over here is I have added this... 036 right hand switch for the industry lead that goes down here to the grain elevator. Now I had one in here before, but it was from my old layout. It was crusted. It was starting to rust. It was in really crappy shape. So I just decided to just bite the bullet and replace it. And so I did. I also bought these little quarter pieces of 036 right here to hold this short little siding which is just large enough for an engine and a caboose or two small four axle engines. And uh, by the way, got that caboose from my friend Chris Bamberg, so thanks for selling that to me, to me guy, I really appreciate that. And uh, basically it's just big enough to hold switchers that are working the industry sections up here. I'm gonna have down here, got a whole bunch of other fast track material down here. I. Uh, <laughs> kind of did a, a little bit of a mistake, and that is I ordered way more bumpers than I actually needed. Um, I accidentally, I forgot these came two to a pack, so uh, that was on me. <laughs> so I've got more bumpers here, which I'll be using for other sections of the layout. I'll probably be able to use them all, but we'll see. I've also got some fast track block sections here to wire up signals. And I've also got an 036 left-hand manual switch, which will be going on the opposite side to where this shelf is. So I've got one shelf here, there'll be another one behind me, which I showed in a previous video. However, I'm not showing you that right now because the train room is an absolute disaster over there. Now, that is going to hold another industry. Um, probably, I'm thinking a warehouse industry or something like that. But uh, time will tell. Uh, the K-Line light tower, this was down on the main level. However, I do have it just sitting here tentatively for now. Might stay there permanently, I don't know. We'll see. Um, obviously the ground cover, I've already talked about that. The uh, Weaver Tennessean, the review for that is coming out soon, if it isn't out already. And uh, the Alco S2 switcher. The U.S. Army one. That one will be one of my two switchers I use up here. I'll probably pair it up with another switcher of some sort. Uh, maybe the Genset from Lionel, I'm not sure. So, uh, yeah. That's really about it. Now, as far as the main level, once I get the rest of the roadbed installed, I'll then be able to start laying down the ground cover like I did on the main table. And uh, I'll probably have to lay down a little bit more over here 
in order to accommodate for the road bed itself. Um, may do some ballasting, may do just regular old grass that I did here. Not sure yet, I'll have to see. But I'm holding off on putting the ground cover on the rest of this until I get the rest of that road bed installed because that is important. But once that is done, uh, where the Challenger is sitting off the tracks right now, very unprofessionally, um, in the farm area, I'm gonna install a uh, wooden fence somewhere in this area to kind of block it off from the layout itself. And uh, that will be <clears throat> its own little area, have its own unique ground cover. Not sure exactly how I'm gonna do that yet, but we shall see as time goes by. So, that is pretty much it, you know. There's been quite a lot of work done. And overall, the layout is coming along pretty well. I am very, very pleased with what I've been able to do in here this year. You know, 2020 has definitely been a rocky year. And here we are mid-August, and it's not showing any signs of letting up anytime soon. So if it's going to be rocky, may as well have some fun with it as well. So that's really about it for this update. Um, until I get the rest of the roadbed installed, probably not going to be running trains too much in here because I just want to go ahead and get that done. So forgive me if running session videos kind of dry up a little bit. That's just a necessary evil when you're working on your layout sometimes. So we'll see what happens, but very excited to finally get at least get at least some scenery down in here, finally. And I'm definitely glad to be fixing that level problem with the track over here because I got very tired of my big articulated engines hitting the center rail and uh, basically risking damaging them, especially the electronics. So we shall see what happens. And in time, hopefully there will be some good stuff to show you guys later on. Uh, also, one thing I forgot to mention, with the roadbed itself, um, the bridge here will definitely be laid on top of that and secured down more permanently. I know it's just for a siding, not really planning on running locomotives over that bridge, but I do need it secured in place a little bit better than what it is now. So, once we get that done, we will go from there. And, yeah... Lots of crazy stuff happening, both in life and on the layout itself. But I'm very excited to be getting some work done in here at last. And to show you guys some actual progress for a change. So, until then, I guess we will just kind of wing it for right now. So be on the lookout for more updates. Um, I do post stuff on Instagram fairly regularly. I do post in the community tab as well whenever I can. Just whenever I don't have anything that will justify making a video on. So <clears throat> be on the lookout for some more stuff when that time comes. And uh, I will see you guys in the future. Let's just back up here and get one parting shot. There you go. So hopefully some more layout progress will be coming in the next few months and I will let you guys know what happens. So until then, this is Ravenhawk6910 signing off.